Joining me right now is Wyoming Senator, member of the Senate Energy and Foreign Relations Committees, John Barrasso, and back with us all morning this morning, Mitch Rochelle and Pat Pat Patrice Anwuka. Uh, Senator, thanks very much for being here. We so appreciate you joining us after your very important meetings yesterday on negotiations with the White House. Can you tell us anything about what went on in your meetings yesterday uh, with regard to your hard infrastructure plans? Well, yes, thanks so much, Muriel. The president's going to have to decide on this in terms of who he really wants to be. Does he want to be middle class Joe and work with us on physical core infrastructure without raising taxes? Or does he want to be big spending Joe Biden's $6 trillion man? That's the decision he has to make. We made a responsible proposal on core infrastructure, physical infrastructure, and doing it without raising taxes. And at the same time, President Biden is there in Michigan making a speech where he's promising more money for electric vehicles than the proposal that he's making in terms of roads, bridges, ports, airports, and waterways combined. And you have the Secretary of Treasury giving this speech about raising taxes by trillions of dollars. So there's still quite a gap there. We expect to hear back from the White House by the end of the week. But I will tell you, the Democrats in the House have now said even $6 trillion isn't enough. They want to go to $7 trillion, Maria. That's a kind of spending and taxing that our economy cannot, really can't afford and won't be able to tolerate. Senator, it's hard to keep track. A trillion here, a trillion there. We're adding up to real money here. What is the latest on this seven trillion dollars? What, 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 what is the spending, specifically, to take the number up to seven trillion from Democrats? Well, it's it's almost more free things for more people. Everything free for everyone, and it's, you know, we are a giving and compassionate people in this country. We want there to be a safety net so people, you know, don't fall through the cracks and can get back up on their feet. But what we're seeing coming from the Democrats is basically an addiction to spending and having people addicted to government. Uh, and that's not what we're about in America. There's a dignity to a job. We have, you know, 8 million jobs available. We have help wanted signs all across Wyoming and across the country. The uh, What's been coming out of this administration has, though, been an incentive to not work. When you pay people more to not work than to work, people aren't lazy, but they're logical, and they follow those incentives. And what we're seeing in this $7 trillion proposal are more incentives to stay home and become more and more dependent on the government. And, of course, you have to That's raise just taxes a lot to do that. Right. So I want to ask you about that part of it. Tell me about your alternative. Was it the $568 billion plan that we've talked about that's specifically roads, bridges, uh, broadband, et cetera? And how are you planning to pay for that? Did you propose any tax increases? Uh, no tax increases at all. You do not touch the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act period. Uh, there are fees that need to be paid by electric vehicles. If there's going to be more and more electric vehicles on the road, you know, they contribute nothing to the highway trust fund because they don't buy gas. They need to be contributing that because they do wear and tear on the roads. There are basically billions and hundreds of billions of dollars from these multiple stimulus bills that have been gone out that have not been spent. You have states with lots of that money sitting in their coffers. They want to use some of that on infrastructure. You have California with $75 billion surplus. There is plenty of money available. There are things that we can do to pay for the reasonable approach that we've come off for what people really think of as infrastructure. And by any way you look at what President Biden has proposed, you know, maybe 30 percent of it is what people would consider core infrastructure, physical infrastructure. But it, it doesn't include all of these other extraneous things that just get people more addicted to government. Senator, on Sunday when we spoke on Sunday Morning Futures, you told me that Joe Biden does not have support of all the Democrats on his massive spending and tax increases that he'd like to get through, through reconciliation. Do you still feel that way? Do you think that you will be able to stop this massive spending and tax increases from becoming reality? Uh, so far, I believe we, we will be able to stop that, which is why I think, and I told you on Sunday, Working with Republicans for this administration is plan B. Their plan A is really the whole uh, big multi-multi-trillion dollar 
spending. If they had the votes, I think they would try to vote for that today. They don't have it, but they're continuing to work to that end, and we want to pretend we want to continue to push forward a offer, a reasonable offer that works for our country, that works yep. for the things that people yep. need. Well, especially since it's arguable whether or not this economy needs any more money thrown at it. We're expecting 9% GDP growth in 2021 without all of this. I want to turn, though, to the violence in Israel and Hamas intensifying against Israel. I'm not sure where Joe Biden stands on this. I mean, you know, Hamas has been firing rockets nonstop at Israel now. This is the second week. President Biden reportedly encouraging Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to wind down the attacks as if it's Netanyahu's fault. I mean, where well, is he on this in terms of this foreign policy and defending our strongest ally in the Middle East? I'm not sure if he knows where he is on this. I know where I am. I stand with the people of Israel. We know that Hamas is a terrorist organization. They are funded by Iran. We know that if Hamas stopped firing, there would be peace. And we also know that if Israel stopped firing, Hamas wouldn't stop until they destroy Israel. We've known that for a long time. This administration is in the wrong place on that. They're continuing to negotiate with Iran to get back into the Iran deal. And that makes it harder when, they're, when the administration is talking to Iran, the funders of the terrorists, the number one terrorist organization in the world, and trying to relieve sanctions on Iran, making it easier for them to commit to fund terror. All right, we will leave it there. Senator, thanks so much for your leadership on all of this. We'll keep watching. Thank you, Maria.